Good evening everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Kitchen, hoping you've had a wonderful day today, wherever you are joining from, are joining us from around the world, please let us know where you're coming from, I am coming from Sydney today, back in my kitchen, we drove home um, yesterday from Melbourne to Sydney, for anyone who's unfamiliar with that drive, um, that's tra traveling from Victoria, the state of Victoria, into the state of New South Wales, it takes Around about eight and a half to nine hours, that's straight through driving, which we were able to do. And hello to Leslie, who's joining us from Tari. Um, it was um, a wonderful drive, um, straight through drive. Um, you know, but have to say that um, had a marvelous time in Victoria, Melbourne, at our book launches just recently. Really wonderful opportunity. Oh, kia ora, Thomas. Good to see you, my friend. And it was it was wonderful to meet so many incredible people um, from from the city of Melbourne. Some of them traveled a bit of a distance to be with us, so it is wonderful to meet all those incredible people. If you joined me in Melbourne, if you've joined me in any of my book launches, thank you so much. <laughs> it has been an absolute honor. Thank you for making me and Mahi part of your journey. That's what we're here for. We're here for support. And today's recipe, I hope it's gonna support you in more ways than one. Hi to Tracy and to the beautiful Christine as well. Jenny, Jenny, oh, it's smoky your way too, my love. I'm sending lots of lots of um, wonderful uh, prayers and wishes your way, Jenny. It's getting it's not too smoky here in Sydney today. As you guys know, we've had some pretty pretty awful catastrophic bushfires still going on uh, throughout the state of New South Wales, Queensland. I, I even think Victoria's got some as well. And kia ora to Coral, who's joining us, joining us all the way from Rarotonga as well. And there's a Bridget joining us. Hi, Bridget. Thank you for joining us as well. So thank you guys for joining us. As I was saying, I'm hoping to give you, give you guys some solutions today to an issue you may have had. And that issue is if you're a chocoholic and you're on this health journey and you've thought, how am I ever going to manage to be a chocoholic and be healthy at the same time? I'm hoping I have a solution for you. Now, I have talked about this recipe before. I've actually shared it to Chris hey, from Ipswich. I've been to Ipswich. That is in Brisbane. Yay! Is it? Yeah, it could be another Ipswich pretty sure as well and um, hi to Ashley for, for joining us too thank you for coming along today this cooking glass is pretty cool it, we're doing a my healthy chocolate and we're doing my gluten-free sugar-free dairy-free vegan chocolate as well not just any old chocolate it's made up of three ingredients I have talked about it before during a Q&A Friday I have also shared with you the recipe. We're gonna share the recipe with you um, right now. Mahay's on the other side of his computer. He's gonna drop in that link if you don't currently have the recipe, so you have a PDF downloaded copy for yourself. You can request it once you click through onto that link. And hi to um, Antoinette, who's joining us from Glam Goods in New Zealand. Glam Goods, now I like the sound of that. Glamorous goods, I like the sound of that. So thank you, and also to the beautiful Lynn, who's joining us, thank you so much as well. She made truffles from last Christmas ebook. How good were they? Because this recipe is not an ebook yet, but I reckon it's perfect for Christmas, because yes, we wanna treat ourselves, yes, we wanna treat the people that we love. This recipe, I reckon, is not only wonderful for you, but you could actually think of it like if you want to start giving foodie gifts for people that is going to make them really, really happy and really, really healthy. This is the recipe I reckon you should do. So I initially created this recipe because I struggled to find a really good, delicious dairy, sugar, gluten free chocolate in any of the supermarkets near me. You know, if it had it was sugar free it was full of uh, um you know dairy and if it was dairy free it was full of sugar or full of sugars that i just you know even if it's a maple that's still a form of sugar so uh, i thought it's time i actually create one for us and i created it and it's so incredibly easy to make like i like to say it's as it's as simple as falling off a log especially if that log is wet it's that easy to make like literally you put the ingredients together there's only three of them and you have made dark chocolate how good is that? I mean, it can't get any easier than that. And hi to Kim, thank you for joining us today as well. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to make this chocolate, but really, like literally, it's simple. And it's kind of more about the ideas, what you can do with this chocolate, because it takes three ingredients. The first of those ingredients is probably gonna be the one that you're gonna to need to do just a little bit of work to source. So I know that this looks like white chocolate buttons, don't they? It's not white chocolate buttons, in fact, it is chocolate. It is the purest form of chocolate that you can get. This is raw organic cacao butter. So this is what happens when the cocoa bean is taken off the tree, that's the which is what makes chocolate. 
that it comes off the tree this cocoa bean and then they press it they don't add anything to it they don't do anything they don't even roast it they just press it and what happens and this is like a big you can imagine they press it with like a big mechanical press when they press it what comes out of it is pure pure cocoa butter or cacao butter that then hardens and comes into and usually little blocks and those blocks are the basis or the base how you start off making any type of chocolate out there is with that raw pressed cocoa butter now because it is like an oil or a butter it does harden so that's what we have here and what the manufacturer has done and this is an organic um, cacao butter that I bought from a company here in Sydney I don't even know if I can't there's no point in me showing you the bag that's the label no it's backwards it's from a company called the source bulk food so they are a zero waste company here in Sydney and I went to visit them today they have a store in Glebe which is kind of central Sydney and these guys are also available throughout Australia New Zealand and Singapore and the UK the source bulk foods so I bought my my cacao butter my raw, raw cacao butter it was five dollars thirty for a hundred grams so I was able to buy that from those guys that came in this cool little bag because yes they are zero waste that now goes into the recycling so that's the first thing you, should, you need to do is you need to be able to track down your cacao butter now why is cacao butter so good for us when we just can't be you know eating chocolate that's sugar free in the supermarket well there's a really good reason remember my my chocolate starts off with three ingredients and then you add whatever flavors you want to add if one of those ingredients is this here let me tell you how good this is for your body it is full of antioxidants and antioxidants fight disease so we're disease fighting when we're having this type of chocolate it is also really high in omega-3s and omega-6s now those uh, those particular things are really good for our brain health they're really good for our heart health as well and if you are someone who is pre-diabetic or has diabetes this is also going to be really good for you too because this is a healthy fat there is no sugar in here this is very very low in carbohydrates so this is really really good for you so we start off with our cacao butter once you've sourced your cacao butter if you live in a very tropical or hot area please store that in the fridge just like that in a jar pop it in the fridge if you have lived somewhere really hot you might come one day and that's a puddle <laughs> it'll, ooh, it'll melt it's a natural product right it's gonna melt so store that in the fridge number one tip store that in the fridge so that's your first ingredient you need to track down you I've also seen this in IGA's in Australia um, so it is wildly wildly widely <laughs> or wildly available throughout the world it's because it's the basis of chocolate making and people also use this to turn it into body butter it's like to rub on as a moisturizer as the natural moisturizer as well watch this space I've got a couple of those recipes too um, so that's your first one source that the next ingredient you're gonna need is in here as you can see this is organic raw cacao powder so this once again is what how they make chocolate and they take that cocoa bean off but they ground it down and they make it into a powder so that's what you have here once again this is raw this is really high in, in, in fiber obviously it's gluten free it's sugar free it's basically cocoa powder but it's the raw good for you version so don't don't be tricked and gone by you know like the purple box of cocoa powder like that I think Cadbury do a cocoa powder and then you make it into a milk drink that is not this that one has got sugar and other things in it this is just pure raw organic cacao notice the spelling it's c-a-c-a-o cacao powder and this is um, really good for us as well so that is the second ingredient is you need cacao so one two the third ingredient if you follow my recipes at all you'll know exactly what I have in my jar and this is my jar of inulin so remember this is a prebiotic this is a dietary fiber it tastes slightly sweet so it's going to help to give our chocolate a little bit of sweetness but it's not sugar and the other thing to remember about this it's also has a laxative effect because it's a dietary fiber so it will make you go to the bathroom so go go gently I like to say with these chocolates a little goes a long way but because we're having all these three good goody 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 ingredients this chocolate is incredibly good for you so you can have some of this chocolate and you may have heard them talk about you know having that little bar of chocolate the little nibble of dark chocolate every night you know what's even better is if you make it yourself and you store it in the fridge and you've always got the healthiest little chocolate snack ready for you so 
Inulin powder I buy online. I buy that um, by you can Google inulin powder. Make sure it's chicory based. That's the best quality inulin powder. And um, remember that this is a um, dietary fiber. So it is going to, if you have too much, you may get a little, so I'm not saying eat, make this chocolate and eat the whole thing in one night. You, you, just trust me, don't do it. There could be some bloating as your stomach starts to feel a little bit uneasy. Laxative, remember that laxative. So, inulin is there. We also have the cacao butter and we have the cocoa powder and that's it. Those are the three ingredients. So come on down to my bench. I'll, see, I'll show you how this all comes together. It's so incredibly simple. It is ridiculous. By the way, what do you guys think of my Christmas decorations? This is my Christmas kitchen. And we're going with the green theme to match the green book. Ah, <laughs> I love it. There's even a Santa in there. He's hiding next to the gingerbread houses. <laughs> So this is my Christmas decoration in my house. I'm not sure if you've seen my Christmas tree made out of Christmas uh, more books uh, and, and on my Christmas tree I'll, I'll share a photo with, with that as well. Um, okay and someone's just saying how lucky they are that they're watching a live. I know it's great right. All right come on down to the bench. Okay there's our three ingredients. Move to the side three ingredients. I'll put that there for now. Okay got my little cooktop here. Got my little pot as well. Um, because we're dealing with um, cacao butter I'm not having to do a double boiler which is normally how you melt chocolate this like I said guys this is so incredibly easy I'm going to put my um, my pot here on the scales and then measure in my buttons and um, in the recipe that we have in the PDF I say to make 50 grams or to use 50 grams of this cacao buttons and that will make you a hundred grams of chocolate pretty good right 50 grams makes a hundred winning winning in life. I'm just going to do a little bit more today because I'm, I'm doubling the recipe. So I'm using 100 grams of cacao buttons, which is not that much. It's about five dollars. It's going to make me, remember it's going to make me 200 grams of chocolate. That's a big bar of chocolate that I'm making with 100 grams. So I've got that in there. That is then going to go onto the cooktop. I'm just going to put it onto a medium heat. And I don't even have to really think about it anymore. Like that's how easy this chocolate is. Just melt it. And I'll show you what it looks like when it melts. It only takes a couple of minutes. Medium heat, we've got it there. And I'm going to put those ingredients just off to the side. And um, show you something else that you could do in the meantime. So in my little, in my little box here, my little, my little uh, container, basket of goodies, I have things that can go into your chocolate. Now these are just suggestions. You can either just have it as straight black chocolate, which by the way, or dark chocolate, which is kind of how I love it. I love it just really, really, really simple. And, oh, Tracy, yes, you saw my tree on Friday when you picked up the books. Yay! Did you count how many books are in there? Because I'm thinking about doing a competition for that. <laughs> count, tell me how many books are in my Christmas tree and I'll send you a couple copies of the book for Christmas. How about that? So in my little basket here, I have some ideas of how you can flavor your chocolate. You could have it straight with those three ingredients. Or you could do something like, in here I just have toasted uh, coconut and some pistachios. You can also do something like goji berries in there. Or it's a really nice and they've got a kind of a robust flavor. I like the old goji berries. If you wanted to add a bit of texture, add some cacao nibs. So this is what, how cocoa powder starts at life, or cacao powder. This is what the big pieces of um, pure chocolate with nothing else in them looks like. And those can be added into your chocolate and then you get a lovely bit of texture going through it. So you could do that as well. Oh, we've got a question. Yes, Mahi? question from Deborah. She's asking, can you use this chocolate for your Rocky Road? Ah, yes, you can, Deborah. So you can use this chocolate for your Rocky Road. And that's kind of my, uh, my original idea of how I thought um, why I was creating it because I use a lot of chocolate chips and stuff in my recipes and I wanted to be able to create something or to have something readily available to me so I started to make my own it's only since it's kind of evolved into people actually making chocolate for them to keep in the fridge to eat but you can use this for the rocky road 100 percent 150 percent actually it's going to be amazing um, the other thing you could put onto your um, onto your little chocolates is I have some dried rose petals as well which I love to use not just as a flavoring agent but also as a garnish on my chocolate so there's multiple things you can do it and of course there is nothing stopping you from getting out the nuts you know almonds chop them up pecans chop them up walnuts hazelnuts macadamia nuts whatever nuts that you like 
you can also chop them up and add them to your chocolate. So I'll show you how that kind of all comes together. We'll start with the basic recipe first, and then we'll kind of we'll kind of freestyle a little bit and see what we can come up with. So the basic recipe is: remember, I talked about that chocolate melt. Look, that's it. It's already doing it. I didn't even I, I, I even forgot it was on, <laughs> and it's already kind of you know melting on itself. Just give it a bit of a swirl. You see, I've got those kind of lumps in there, which is still the the buttons melting down. Just leave it on there until they completely melt down. Simple as that. The next thing we're going to do is remember I'm doubling the recipe for the one in the PDF. So in the PDF it calls for three tablespoons of cacao powder. So I'm going to add six tablespoons. I'm not even going to measure this, but I must say, um, depending on how dark you like your chocolate. So I'm doing, I'm going to do three, uh, six level tablespoons of cacao powder into here. It's actually pu perfectly melted now. It's completely liquid. So I'm going to take that off now. In fact, what I will do, because I love you guys so much, is I'll get a glass bowl so you can actually see what I'm doing here. All right, there we go. So this is going to make it even easier. So now that the chocolate or the, uh, the cocoa buttons have melted, Let's pour it in there. That's all it is. I know it kind of looks like butter's melted or you know or oil, but that is literally all you do. No other cooking is required. Do not overheat it. Do it very gently. You don't have to bring it to the ball. Just on a medium heat until it's like this. That's all you're doing. Easy, right? So let's add in our um, our raw cacao. And as I was saying, I'm going to be adding in six level tablespoons. Sorry. And I'm doing level. If you really like it chocolatey, you might find that you do um, heaped. But I gotta say that it gets quite bitter because <laughs> this is just pure cocoa powder. There's nothing else in here. Is that four, five, five? There we go. If I've got one extra, I'll just do a half. All right. So that's in there. We're next gonna be adding in the inulin. And once again, remember inulin. I can't say this enough. Stress this enough. Inulin is a dietary fiber. Fiber makes you go toilet. So you can't exactly eat this like it's sugar, because it's not sugar, it's a dietary fiber, but it happens to be sweet. We're going to add in three tablespoons of this, which is quite a lot of inulin. If you ate all that, my word, would you have a sore stomach? Like seriously guys, you'll have a sore stomach. So, do not eat this all by yourself, you have to share, or you have to make it last. And hello to fans who's just joined us. You've made this, haven't you, my love? I've seen your pictures, they were wonderful. All right, so... In there, stir. Told you it was as easy as falling off a log. Like, that's it. Log, you're now off the log, you're in the water. It's fun in the water, especially if it's warm. Unless it's Australia and there's crocodiles. And then you want to stay on the log. <laughs> so that's it. That's, you've made chocolate. That's, I'm serious, guys. This is all there is to it. If you're not going out right now, looking online and finding out where you can buy my buttons, my cacao buttons, to make this yourself, right? Done. That's all you do. There is nothing else to do but that. It is like I said, fall off the log and you will get chocolate. So now you have a couple of things that you can do. You can think about all those wonderful ingredients that you want to add into it. But the first thing I suggest you do is decide what mold you want to use. So this is what the chocolate's gonna look like when it comes out. So this cutie little thing, check that out. Look, it's like it's like a waffle the cutest thing ever made of silicone so it's really easy to remove the chocolate I bought this at Daiso which is that wonderful Japanese store uh, I think they're all throughout the world the Daiso Sydney and, and, and uh, definitely in Australia pretty sure they're in New Zealand too and it costs I think it's like $2.80 for that mold and you make little waffles this is the coolest thing ever you can do that you can also do this is just an ice cube tray that I bought from Daiso as well but it's you know it's flexible so the chocolate can pop out so I can make chocolates like that big or you can definitely do something like this once again hi Daiso you can make little individual chocolates if you want to do that as well and once again couple bucks for that um, silicone wash in the dishwasher last forever really versatile fantastic little chocolate molds from those guys you decide on the um, the style of mold that you want to use I'm thinking about making these to give away as gifts, so I'm going to go for a slightly bigger chocolate mold. 
than these ones. Um, so I'm gonna, then the, I'm gonna put, make these ones another time. They're gonna go back over there. But if you don't have chocolate molds, don't think you have to rush out and buy some. Just lay um, some baking paper onto a roasting tray or a sandwich tin or something like that. Or even put it into a plastic container. It doesn't really matter. And you'll get rustic, <laughs> rustic chocolate, which is what we say when we don't have any fancy molds and we just break it up with our hands. We have rustic chocolate. So molds are up to you. That's, that's completely, you know, your decision. You decide what you're going to do there. I would definitely suggest if you're using quite a, a wobbly mold like I have there, is put a board down and lay the board on the mold because when the chocolate is in these molds picking it up can be a bit of a bit of a nightmare so you want to make sure that you've got a lovely secure spot to put them on so that when you pop them in the fridge or in the freezer is probably better because it takes so much um, shorter you're not getting chocolate spilt all over the place so those go in there the first thing um that we want to do is we actually want to fill our molds before we put any toppings on and i'll show you why in a second so i'm going to just Pour them in to the mold straight away. Don't have to do anything to the mold. Don't have to grease them. Pour them in, and I'm just going to cover the waffle. Beep. I don't want them to be too thick because if they're too thick, they're really hard to eat. Trust me, they're really hard to eat. So I'm going to be making them as thin as possible. And so it doesn't matter how big your mold is. I think the most important thing is to ensure that they're not too thick, because thick is just like I said, it's really really hard to eat. And um, you could remember to store these, you put them in the fridge. So I'm going to make them as thin as I can, but at the same time, as fun as I can. That's a real fun mold. So Christmas tree, imagine that, you can do Christmas tree molds. I'm now going to pop that into the fridge just to begin to harden. I'll show you why in a second. Bear with me. Can you hear my jingle bells? It's on my fridge. I've got jingle bells on my fridge. I know, it's weird, right? Like, oh, it's in the fridge, right? Every Christmas I put jingle bells on my fridge. <laughs> Love it. All right, let's go to the next mold. This one's a bit not as not as flimsy, so I don't have to worry about a board underneath it. And once again, I'm just going to pour them straight into the molds. And remember, not too thick, because you want to be able to bite down on it. And because you store it in the fridge, it's going to be pretty hard. So you can see even from that little bit of chocolate, 100 grams of chocolate that I made, I've made six really decent sized bits of chocolate. But it's great. Don't waste any. If I had a spatula, I'd be happy. I probably do have a spatula. Oh, yes, I do. Gotta get the old spatula out. You don't want to waste any of this wonderful chocolate. So remember, thin is best rather than thick pieces because they live in the fridge and they'll just be really hard to bite and you want to eat them straight away. So, <laughs> so if they're thin, they're going to be able to be bitten really easily. All right, so that's done. Now I'm putting this one into the fridge as well just because I want it to start to cool down on me and I will show you why like I said in a second. So this one, we've got the first lot in the freezer, in the fridge, sorry, this one I'm actually going to put into the freezer so it's nice and starts to really firm up even before we've added anything to it. Alright, when it goes into the freezer, here's a little point for you guys, when it goes into the freezer or into the fridge, make sure it is level. Because if it's like this, your chocolates are going to be not flat and not straight. So just make sure that everything in your fridge or your freezer, fridge is usually easy, you just put it onto a shelf, but freezer tends to have ah, stuff everywhere. Just make sure you put it onto a flat, even level surface so your chocolates are not all wonky like that. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to think about those toppings. When it comes to the toppings, of course, the choice really is yours. In the recipe, I talk about even just adding a little bit of pure vanilla extract to that mixture we've got in there with chocolate. And you've got like more of a vanilla, vanilla, a vanilla flavored chocolate. You could try adding some pure peppermint essence or oil into there to make a peppermint chocolate, which would be fabulous. Um, you can do something like these types of things, of course, coconut and pistachios and all that sort of business. Um, a real popular one for people is to do things with nuts which is what we're going to do now i'm going to put my nuts straight into here and give them a fine chop because i don't want them to be too big in the slices because you're eating supposedly a very delicate chocolate so you don't want a big piece of um you know almond biting onto you you want it to be nice and small got a question yes mahi couple questions came yep. out in the microwave oh can yes you use fiber syrup instead of any okay first question was can you melt the cocoa buttons in the microwave? Yes, you can, 100%. It is that easy. They're not going to burn. You know, just pop them in high for 30, 30 seconds to a minute and they'll be all done. That is definitely um, one thing you can do. Almonds, 
Just throw a few almonds in there. Um, and the next question was, can you use fiber syrup instead of inulin? Um, I'm, I would avoid it, to be honest with you, only because they may not set. You could use a little bit of fiber syrup, and that's why I use inulin in this recipe, to make it a, a really good prebiotic chocolate. Um, you could use a little bit in, in the chocolate, but not too much because you want it to set. And because I haven't tested that theory out, I don't know how much you can add. So for now, I'm going to say avoid it, only because I haven't tried it. Can't give you the exact um, dimensions of how much you can use. You can definitely do it, but it won't be, say if there's, you know, two tablespoons of inulin powder in there, it won't be two tablespoons of fiber syrup because the chocolate may not set. It may end up being like a glue or like a fudgy, like a real, like really thick, gluey fudge. So I'll just, just for now, I will just avoid it. Um, if someone does try it, please let us know and let us know how you get on and how much you actually were able to add before it turned into a glue. That'd be wonderful. So nuts are in here only because I want to make them nice and small. I've got almonds and pecans in there. Beautiful. You want sort of that kind of that kind of size? Yeah, you don't you, know, you don't want like said, you don't want to have too many chunks in there. You don't want to make it too hard to eat. You want to make this as easy as possible to eat. And yes, you can roast the nuts if you want to. If you don't like almonds, if you don't like pecans, then you could use walnuts, you could use, you know, hazelnuts, um, you could do it with mac macadamia nuts, which would be amazing. Any type of nut you like, up to you. If you don't do nuts at all, but you still want to have a nutty flavor, you could also do that with sunflower seeds, which would be really nice. So there are a few options for you, um, but nuts are definitely one of them. So that's one thing that we've got there. We've got some nuts. I'm also going to just cut up a bit, roughly chop. I've got pistachios and those wonderful coconut flakes, toasted coconut flakes. They look amazing. Um, but not only do they look amazing, my knife, they also give a lovely flavour. We know how well these two ingredients go with chocolate. So coconut and chocolate, match made in heaven. I love the pistachio nuts because they help to give the chocolates a really beautiful flavour as well as a lovely texture, uh, a lovely taste. Oh, sorry, they give it a colour as well as a flavour is what I'm trying to say. So they're always very, very good. And you want to leave um, the chocolate at this point in the fridge or the freezer for about five minutes to just harden. Not to be hard, because you still want to add these ingredients, but you want them to be in there just to harden up a bit. Because if I were to add the ingredients now, they'll just float down to the bottom and you wouldn't actually see all these beautiful colours. So that's why we leave it in the fridge just for a little bit. If you don't want to be bothered with that, you just throw everything in, bung everything in, and then pour it all out into your moulds like that. But I like things to have a little bit of colour and a little bit of, you know, on top, especially if you're giving them away for gifts. So goji berries are one that you could use if you like them. We also have, oh, these are cool. These are freeze-dried strawberries that I, um, that I bought. And I actually bought them from the IGA. And I've seen them also available in the supermarket in Coles. They are just freeze-dried strawberries. There's no sugar in there, there's no preservatives, there's no nothing. They are literally just <laughs> the berry. And you can also get freeze-dried bananas, you can get freeze-dried mangoes and pineapples and blueberries. And the color of those is sensational. The flavor is pretty amazing too. It's like eating strawberry lollies. So those are very cool. And um, they do definitely add quite an interesting dimension to our chocolate. So those can go on there. Once again, if you don't like them, don't add them. If you like them, add more. <laughs> Remember my roses, my beautiful dried roses that I get from my um, my Asian grocer. I'm just going to take off the the end of it, which is the the leafy green bit, and then just break the um, petals open. And then you've got all these wonderful petals there. I just think they're amazing. They're such a good color. They make everything pretty, don't they? They make everything really, really pretty. And they just have that little tiny hint of rose and of course anyone who's ever you know been anywhere and eaten anything in your life you guys know that rose and chocolate are two flavors that go really really well together so just break open those little petals there colors great smell aroma just kind of kind of pretty and exciting which is what i like okay they can go in there have I got anything else exciting? Yeah, why not? Remember our cacao nibs? So I'm just sort of getting those ingredients ready. Because while I've done that, I would imagine 
I would imagine that our chocolate is probably a little bit firm now in the fridge. I'm gonna go to the fridge and get it. Listen for the jingle bells. Yeah, I wasn't even going in the fridge, I was going in the freezer. Wrong one. Wrong one, bridge. Alright. It was in there too long. <laughs> it was in there too long. Look, it's already ready. It's already ready to be broken out. Alright. It was only in there. So it should only be in there for a couple of minutes. I put it in there for too long. You know what I can do? Just to give it a bit of a melt, I'm just going to pop it in the microwave. <laughs> just for like 20 seconds. Someone count 20 seconds and let me know when the time is up. <laughs> Alright, I reckon I'm going for it. Nine, yeah, well, it's about 10 seconds, that should be enough. Oh, no, a little bit longer. Five seconds, won't be long guys. Alright. This is how versatile this chocolate is, is that I, it was a little bit too hard before and just a quick little burst in the microwave means I can start to add those toppings because we want the toppings to stick, right? We want them to kind of go into the um, <laughs> into the chocolates. So I am making just a pure chocolate one here. So I've just got chocolate and more chocolate. That's the first one. The next one, I'm going to be doing a chocolate and salt flake one. So then you've got these wonderful textures and you've got that little bit of hint of salt, which is going to be so wonderful. That's another one I'm doing. I'm going to do a Christmas one as my last one. So I'm going to be adding those uh, strawberries going on. I'm also going to be adding some of the pistachios because Christmas has got to have green colors in it, right? So a few pistachios are going to go in there, squish them down into the almost hard chocolate. And then some of that wonderful coconut, flake coconut goes on the top. And let's finish it off just with a few of those, a few of those gorgeous rose petals. So those are my three chocolate varieties I have. Just a plain chocolate. This is like a double chocolate. I've got chocolate, salted chocolate, and I've also got this Christmas one here. That's going to go back into the freezer probably for only a minute or two. And it'll be ready to show you guys. There we go. And the other one that we had in the fridge, the other one that have we had in the fridge is already beginning to set. You can already see it going starting to harden up. So it's actually going to be a really good time for me to start adding some of those flavors. And remember, we had nuts. Let's, let us not forget the nuts. So those beautiful nuts are gonna go in there. Now we have a chocolate, hazelnut, and almond uh, little bite for people. You know what would be really nice on that? Just because it's nuts. Just a tiny sprinkle of sea salt. It's gonna go in there. That's one. I really love that Christmas idea, so I'm gonna go back to that with that little Christmas. Beautiful. Some rose petals. Mahi was just asking, where did I get the holders from? The These molds yeah. I got from Daiso. D-A-I-S-O. You can Google Daiso. They are a Japanese um, little sort of variety shop. And they do have some of the coolest things in the world. If you've never been into a Daiso, be, pre be prepared to amaze yourself. You can pick up the coolest things in Daiso and a lot of the bowls that you see me using um, in my in my cookbooks and throughout my um, cooking classes and stuff I actually get them from Daiso I just think they're the coolest stuff ever so we've got this really awesome mix and I think this is what I call Christmas chocolate and this is the sort of stuff like I said we give away to people we love we've got the nut version which is all small we've got all these wonderful things going on there remember a little just a little bit of salt you can do plain chocolate you can do chocolate and peppermint chocolate and chocolate and uh, vanilla you know you just decide what you want you could also do this which would be like the healthiest chocolate ever this is a jar of my brusley you know Bridget's muesli with toasted buckwheat and you know and sunflower seeds and chia seeds and all the sorts of gorgeous gorgeous things in there there's nothing stopping you from doing that as well. Or go plain. Go completely plain. There is nothing wrong with just a good bite of dark, dark chocolate that you made yourself. So that's going to go back into the fridge to harden. But I've got something to show you. Something to show you. Because of course, I'll put that over there. Of course, here are some I prepared earlier. So. What does it look like once they come out, out of that waffle mold? Mold. Are you ready? Check it out. How good is that? Look at it. That is so cool, right? So that came out of the waffle mold. And when it's ready, and you'll know it's ready because it'll be hard, you literally just do this with the mold. 
you just do this it'll be in the mold like that and then you just like and you just pop it out and it pops out perfectly every single time so that was our christmas one um i did the remember the little one the little um ice there was an ice cube tray this is just like a plain chocolate one nice and thin that is going to be so perfect for you to eat right that's just a nice piece of chocolate there this is the sea salt one you can even see the sea salt in there which is gorgeous once again nice and thin really easy to bite and there is our fabulous christmas one in that size as well so it's up to you what size you do them in like i said they don't take long to set and once they are set, you get to pop them out and you get to have these amazing chocolates. So what you could do next, and I do suggest you do it because it's gorgeous and I think it's going to really make things just that much Christmas here. Because I have some little bits and pieces here. I have a little cellophane bag, of course, and you can make your own little Christmas gifts. Remember, these have to live in the fridge, so maybe you want to put a little sticker on it for whoever you give it to and say, you know, please store me in the fridge. But, you know, it's just the most perfect opportunity for you to make someone a little handmade gift. A gift with love. Oh, I'm going to put that one. That one's, that one's just a plain chocolate one as well, like that. That's just a plain, sorry, that was a salted one. A gift made with love. And that's 500, that's 50, just over 50 grams of chocolate. Check it out. Is that little, oh, it's so cute. I know I like it. A little bit of um, beautiful Christmas ribbon that we have here. And chocolate colours. Why not, of course, in chocolate colours? Let's get cut some ribbon. I have so many ribbons. I am a bit of a ribbon collector. <laughs> I do always go and buy ribbons. I just think they're so beautiful. I love the colours. I love the wire edged ribbons because you're able to fold it around and stuff. So you take your little ribbons and you make a little. Make a little parcel with your chocolates, not too far down, because you want them to be able to see the beautiful chocolates in there. I haven't tied a bow back to front, I wonder if I can do it. Oh yeah, here we go. Here we go. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And remember, this is wire ribbon. So wire ribbon then gives you the ability... Oh, I got this ribbon from Costco, if you're wondering. Costco, oh, my scissors are not very sharp. Costco do some of the most beautiful ribbons. They really do. And it's huge. It's like 50... How many? Okay. This is 50 metres of ribbon for about $12 at Costco. 50 metres of ribbon. And yes, it is this beautiful wire ribbon. So you're able to you know, do these really cute little things with it. And make like literally the cutest little gift ever. And then, you know, just to top it off, I've just got like a little foodie gift tag, <laughs> of course. It's this wonderful little wooden uh, spoon and um, spoon and fork, antique spoon and fork, just to make it even more foodie. And look at that, you have the most gorgeous little Christmas gift to give to someone that you made yourself with about 50 grams of chocolate. <laughs> you know, it's costing you around about $3 for that and that is homemade and perfect, but you also saw how easy it is to make. So this is what I'm thinking when it comes to these sort of chocolates. Just remember, store these in the fridge. When you give them to someone, take a chili bin <laughs> or put them in an esky so you don't melt them on the way to them if you're traveling. And then just make sure they store them in the fridge again. And if it's in the fridge, you've always got access to something delicious. Now, the last thing I want to do with you guys, I'm going to put that over here for now. Husband's already eyeing it up. Last thing I'm going to do is we're going to have a look at what those other chocolates were like in the freezer. One second. All right. Those are our chocolates that we just made. I have a question. Yes, Mahi? Kui has asked, is this chocolate suitable for fresh fruit, like dipping strawberries into chocolate? Not so much dipping sauce, but chocolate fruit and strawberries. Uh, yes, they are. They are. Well, uh, I'm not sure if you guys can hear that question. That was quite a long question. Is, the, is this chocolate suitable for doing do chocolate drips, dipped strawberries? It is, but you need to let the chocolate cool down a little bit and thicken a little bit, like it's still in the, in the pan. You can't do it when it's freshly made because the chocolate will not stick to the straw because it's quite thin. It actually thickens up upon cooling. So you have to cool it a little bit. But cooling it a little bit um, could be a little bit, of, a little bit tricky to get it right because you don't want it to be too cool and you don't want it to be too um, hot as well. Look at that. That's the one we made together. He's a good one, eh? Look at that. He's gorgeous. He's going to go over there. Um, so yes, you can definitely do chocolate chips dipped strawberries, but um, you need to just 
melt that down sorry cool that down a little bit before you do the dipping otherwise the chocolate will not stick to the strawberry i'm going to pop that back in the freezer just for another second not quite ready but it's ready enough so there you go guys yay how cool is it our first little christmas cookie uh, christmas gift to give to someone you love or if you love yourself give it to yourself because yourself is just as important all these gorgeous little chocolates that we're making here um, I'm hoping this is giving you inspiration to get back into the kitchen make something really healthy and delicious for yourself but please remember oh I forgot look I forgot this look at this little twig I forgot to put the twig in one second I gotta I, you can't I can't finish this off I gotta finish this off properly can't have a, a gift go out without a twig it's just not me. There you go. Now it's got a twig. It's really Christmassy now. <laughs> You've got to have a twig on it, right? There you go. Uh, so yes, don't forget. Do not forget. Really important information. Do not forget. Uh, on the 13th of December, which is Friday this week coming, if you're in the United States, uh, it is the 12th of December for you guys because you're a day behind. If you're in Hawaii or ever, you know, if you're behind Australia and New Zealand. For New Zealand and Australia, there's the 13th. Friday is the 13th. I know for some that's an unlucky day. For us, it's going to be extremely lucky because on that day, we're going to be starting our 12 cooking days till Christmas, which basically means I'm going to be cooking with you guys every single day for 12 days leading up to Christmas. Our last one's going to be on December the um, 24th, which is Christmas Eve, of course. I'm doing 12 recipes, tips, hints. A lot of those recipes can be taken straight from um, Bridget's Healthy Christmas ebook. I'll be showing you the techniques behind the recipe. So if you've struggled to make pavlova in the past, or if you're wondering how I make a dairy-free, gluten-free, sugar-free pavlova, uh, sorry, uh, trifle, or you want to know how I make my Christmas pudding so moist and delicious, or maybe you want to know how to cook the perfect, the perfect roast turkey for Christmas. We're going to be doing roast prawns. We're going to be doing whole salmon. We're going to be doing all sorts of beautiful and delicious things leading up to Christmas. 12 cooking days to Christmas. Uh, day one, which is on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me what's me giving to you. I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to make, how to make my amazing Christmas pudding slash cake. That is day one. So on Friday, we're gonna be doing Christmas pudding, which by the way, if you have not tried my Christmas pudding yet, it is mind-blowing. Even if you don't like Christmas cake, it is mind-blowing. You can have it as a cake, you can have it as a pudding. Heat it up, have it with custard, or you can slice it and keep it um, for you in your Christmas tin as well. It is mind-blowing. Join me on Friday, starting on Friday, and then we're gonna do one on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, every single day. All the tips and hints that you guys need, well, maybe some of you don't need it, you just wanna remind yourself, or maybe you do need it. As you're leading up to Christmas and how to stay healthy and how to stay stress-free because Christmas can be a very stressful time for all of us so I want to make this this experience as stress-free as possible keep you on track to your goals and even maybe trick some of your family into eating something healthy as well because it just happens to be delicious so that's what we're gonna be doing get your Christmas ebook Bridget's healthy you can get your ebook 50 recipes in there we're gonna be doing techniques for 12 of them coming up starting on Friday I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to see you guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed this. If anyone's close to me, please come get your gift. It's ready. <laughs> Just got to open the, the, the fridge with the jingle bells. That's all. All right, guys. Love you lots. See you soon. Take care. Bye.